Climate change and how it affects your health. New findings show how harmful nanoparticles could be toxic to both the lungs and the brain. In terms of air quality, that's actually probably the most widely studied of uh, climate change issues. Climate change is secondary to uh, pollution from the burning of fossil fuels. That actually also uh, creates particulate matter, which are these tiny nanoparticle-sized particles that we're breathing in every day uh, as we walk around. They're greater in urban areas than they are in rural areas. Uh, as we produce more and more of these fossil fuels, we're starting to see some of the effects of these uh, inhaling these nanoparticles. It turns out that they're not just toxic to the lungs, which is widely known, there's actually some evidence that there's neurotoxicity. That is the uh, particulate matter that we inhale. Some of it goes directly into our lungs, and then it actually travels into uh, our brains across the blood-brain barrier. So if we're creating more of these pollutants and we're inhaling, inhaling more of these pollutants, may actually, we may actually be having some downstream effects on brain development and even things like Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. Climate change is going to have a lot of effects, some of which are predictable and some of which are unpredictable. For example, uh, Zika virus. Zika virus uh, is a concern because of climate change. As the climate changes, mosquitoes are able to live in north, more northern areas of the country. So I think what's going to happen, what you're going to see is there's going to be more and more um, concern about the effects of these viruses very, very appropriately, and say pregnant women will start to use mosquito repellents. If they're using mosquito repellents more commonly, uh, there's a substance called DEET that's found in most uh, mosquito repellents. We don't actually know the neurotoxicity of DEET. Right now, physicians actually counsel women who are pregnant not to use mosquito repellent during pregnancy, particularly if you live in a northern area like Michigan or Minnesota, which is actually where I grew up. Um, you wouldn't typically do that. Now you might start doing that. So now an uh, unborn child who's exposed to DEET, we don't actually know the effect of that anymore. Um, that requires more research. We're going to have to understand what that long-term downstream effect is.